All right, so now it's time to really to open and review the startup project. And we're gonna take a look at the helpers and the models. Let's get an overview of the helpers and models. We're gonna analyze the application's common features. We're gonna import the startup project. And we're gonna review in the root, the main page, the helpers, which will be the constants, the formatters, the navigation transition, the themes, and the models, we're gonna have the user model. Next, we're gonna actually get the start a project, which is available in your resources uh, section of this course. And you look under the source code and look for the split screen responsive starter project. All right, let's review our starter project. And we're gonna concentrate first on our helpers and models. I have the main Dart file open, and all we have is really a material app, right, with our title, Split Screen Responsive, and we have the theme, the light theme, and for the dark theme, the dark theme, which we'll review in just a few minutes. And the theme mode is set to system. So whatever the device system is set to, either dark or light mode, our Flutter application will know to switch between the two automatically. So let's go ahead and uh, close this down. And let's uh, open up the helpers folder and let's open up the constants Dart file. So we have uh, an enum for responsive sizes here. Let's take a look at that first. And all this is to say, okay, we have mobile, tablet, desktop, and web. That's what we're gonna monitor. In future videos here, we're gonna add logic to our responsive sizes, which device method, and we'll actually add logic here that will figure out, hey, what, how much space do we have available? What device are we running? Uh, what's our pixel ratio and so on? So we can figure out what layout to display. Let's uh, open up the class sizes. I'm gonna scroll up here. All this is just some global defaults for our sizes. We have the image height, the large icon, medium and small icon sizes, the badge large size, the list width, and in other words, that when we do our split screen, we want the list width to be not more than 320 pixels. Vertical divider width, 1.0 and so on. And these are places where you can adjust uh, the sizes globally according to the design that you need. And then we have a class called selected page. Let's scroll this up. So what does this have? It's going to have basically a list of widgets, which is our pages. So for the selected pages, when we have a regular screen other than a, not a split screen, right? Let's say we're in a mobile environment, right? And we do not have a split screen. We're going to have the users list, the users grid, and the dashboard pages. But if our layouts requires a split screen layout. And we're gonna add this later. We're gonna add the split screen. The user grid and dashboard will be the same as the mobile. Excellent. Let's close this down. And let's open up our formatters helper class here. And let's open this up. So what do we have? I've added here a two currency, which we do not use in this application, but I just wanted to put it there for you so that you can have it. It's just a simple way that I'm doing like a regular expression here. to just format numbers in this format. It's for right now, it's in the US format. You can change that to whatever your local format is. It's there for future use, but we're not gonna use it in this particular application. But in this application, we will use the to readable date because we wanna change our uh, date to an actual readable date in this kind of format. We would, for example, say January 1st, 2024. And this does not use any third-party packages. Um, otherwise, uh, if you want a more powerful package to use, the INTL package is really good for this. For our use, this does the job. We pass in a date and time, and it will format it into the month, the number of day, comma, and the year. Let's go ahead and close the formatter. And why don't we open up now the 
navigation transition. So what is this? So let me open this up. This is just a custom. When we navigate on a mobile environment from the list to detail, I like to do a little custom animation with the hero widget. And you don't have to do this, but I like to do the fade transition between the routes because I also like to manipulate the duration of the animation. And you can change this according to your needs. But what we have is just a fade transition. So when we do the navigation, we're going to do this particular fade transition. And as you can see, it's just regular fade transition. It returns a widget that is being passed. And you'll see how this is used in future videos. Excellent. And let's close this down. Let's open up the themes class. So we have three classes here. We have the themes. And let's take a look what we have. We have the light theme, right? And of course, by default, this uses the material three currently. So we just said our light theme is basically going to be theme data light. And we're going to copy with a seed of deep purple, the brightness we want it to be light. And for the arrow, we want the themes colors to be arrow, which we'll look here in a few minutes, which in our case will be red. Now let's look at the dark theme, right? The dark theme is the same thing. We're going to see it the same way with a deep purple, but instead the brightness is going to be dark. And what do we have here? We have a class called theme colors. This is where we define our global theme colors. Even sometimes if it's just light blue, it's just colors light blue. I like to define it globally here because in the future, I might want to change this light blue to something else or a different shade of that light blue. So these are just basically our globally defined colors. And then I have one more item here, just a basic random color list that takes the primary colors of a material and just does a random and just says, give me a list of colors and randomly put it in a list of 50 items. I just happened to put 50 because I know our sample data is going to be less than this. And you can, of course, change that according to your needs. Let's open up the user model. And I'll just do a quick review here, but this basically is just our class for our user model, OK? So our user model is going to have basically a list of users, OK? And all I have here is I made a factory method that loads our sample data from JSON, and I'll show it to you here in a few seconds, and just takes the JSON file and converts it. Just simple as that, just basic information. I'm going to look at the more important information, like the class, the user. It's got basically the gender, male, female, the name, the string, date of birth, the picture. And you'll have a list of pictures here, three different pictures, and the um, nationality. Okay, And we also have a factory method here that I created that just creates blank default values for our class. So when we first run the application, we don't have anything selected, so we just want to create a blank default record that doesn't show anything on our detail screen when we're running in a split screen scenario. OK. And let me scroll down a little bit more. I will not look into the date of birth, the gender. You can take a look at those, OK? And I just wanted to show you a little bit our sample data. So it's a JSON object. That's it, which is a list of users. And if you notice here, each user has got this particular information, the gender, the name, title first, last, the email, the date of birth, the age, the picture. We have large, medium, and thumbnail, and the nationality. Excellent. Let's go ahead and close this down. Let's summarize what we have reviewed in the helpers and models. We analyzed the application's common features. We imported the startup project. And we reviewed at the root, the main page, the helpers, the constants, the formatters, the navigation transitions, the themes. And on the models, reviewed the user model. Next, we're going to continue to review the startup project, but we're going to take a look at the state and the widgets.